Well, we got a problem. It's a big one. It's going to be a big setback. Caution. I'm a hack. I learned everything I know from a guy leaned against a shade tree, having a drink, and smoking a cigarette. Hey, welcome back. So, uh, we're trying to get this IROC ready to go on Power Tour. I leave next Saturday, so I have until Friday, so I have seven days, including today, to finish this car. Uh, last video, I dropped the motor in, I finally got it bolted up. We don't have the transmission cross member yet, but it'll be in today. Uh, it's the third cross member I've ordered, and the only one that I have a hope of uh, getting here, evidently. So... We'll have to modify it, I'm sure. Uh, we got lots and lots and lots to do. Um, so, uh, first thing we're going to try to do is try to get the Phytech system unboxed, looked at it, figure out how it goes on, put the intake and stuff on, and just get to work. We we got headers to throw in this thing and all sorts of stuff. So, uh, well, yeah, we're just going to get to work, follow along as best that we can, and see how it goes. Whew, we're getting close. It's real now, people. So before I start the Phytec stuff, I want to see if I can get the headers in here. Just to make sure everything's going to clear with them. It's supposed to, everybody says it works out really good. It's the Speed Engineering Stainless Headers. Um, I'm going to pull them out and see if we can get them in. I'll set you all up on the stand. thing fits in there so well um, good job speed engineering almost if I can get the other side to go in look what just came in my cross member I am super happy to finally see the see one all it took was ordering three UMI because that's what I could get. I also ordered one for a TH400 since the CD009 there isn't one for it. I don't know. I'm sure we'll have to do some modifications but there she is. Alright. I'm stoked about that. I think that'll be the next thing we try to put in come with hardware yes it does awesome i'm going to uh i'm gonna take a break and then we'll try to slam that in well i bolted it up and to no surprise it bolts right in place but um we're gonna have to relocate the transmission mount itself and basically flip it over so we can put the polyurethane mount in there not a terrible modification um i, was, I knew i'd have to do something it's really not that bad um, but for now, I don't want to do that because I just don't want to do that. But I did go ahead and set the uh, transmission down on that mount so we can, you know, safely work and whatever, and it won't be moving around. Uh, I'm going to set the car down and, uh, I'm going to start looking at the Phytech stuff and we'll see what we're going to do with all that. Let's open this Phytech box and see what's in it. Goodness, Fatek. Boxing skills are way up there. She's pretty. Man, 
fantasy group. You'll never see that, but look at the inside of that throttle body. I guess that's our wiring harness. Sensors and that's our programming screen. Bracketry. Oh, that's for putting in an O2 sensor. We've got bones for that. Fuel rail. Actual computer. Injectors. Bolts and other hardware. Injector harness. Other injector harness. Mount for that. Screen. That's everything in that box. All right. I'm going to read the book. There again, I still can read. I'm going to read the book and kind of figure out what we're going to do. And uh, I'll bring y'all back in once I have a plan. I don't have a plan yet. Hey. It's the next morning. Yesterday I ended up reading all the instructions, whatever, had dinner, edited your all's video, got it out. So, uh, yeah, six days left. Here we are. Um, I just set the intake on there. Yeah, it looks nice. I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, so we're going to start throwing this thing together. Well, there's quite a few steps, but none of them's hard, really. It doesn't look like it. So uh, I'm just going to start throwing it together. We'll talk about it as I go and We'll see if we can get all this uh, Fitec intake and computer and all that wired up and figured out where we're going to mount a computer, right? Lots to do, so let's get to work. All right, I've kind of got everything laid out from the system. Uh, we're just going to go through the instructions kind of step by step. We may skip a couple here and there just so we can pre-assemble as much of the system as we can so we can put the intake on basically how it's going to be. So... One of the first things that, that you've got to do <clears throat> is unplug this rear port and the uh, mass air pressure sensor goes in here. Get yourself a little bit of grease, put on this O-ring so you don't mar it up. We don't want to hurt anything. Doesn't take much, just a little bit. Kind of rock it back and forth and it'll slide right in. Put that same bolt right back in place. Alright, the next thing we're putting on is the air temp sensor. Also provided. already got thread tape on it. It plugs right in inside of the intake. It's a 19 millimeter. I'll just thread her in. Next we're going to install the throttle body. Now it does not come with this in Phytech. I can't imagine why in the world you don't include this. But, it does not come with a throttle bracket. So you have to order it separate. Part number 70063, I think is the, there might be ones for different things. Maybe that's why they don't include it. This is the one for GM. The throttle bracket comes with the little throttle cable holder thing goes in like that and it's got a bolt that just slides through it and bolts it down nothing crazy but for now we're not going to put that on and then the next thing is to actually put it all together and what they tell you to do is to put a little bit of grease on this and then put the gasket on it but really that's probably not necessary you can just 
put a bolt through the throttle body. Then through the gasket. Like that. And get her started. Now I'm going to go ahead and install this bracket just so it's uh, on here and we ain't got to look for it later. So this is an adjustable bracket and this uh, little fella just fits right in here. Like so. that on good. Next step is going to be installing the fuel rails. And the first thing we're going to do for them is install the fuel injectors. Of course the injector goes in like this. We'll put a little bit of grease on them and fit them all in there. Make sure they spin a little bit when they after they go in so we know they're not in a bind. <laughs> Now it comes with these little brackets that you mount to the intake and then mount the fuel rail onto that. So let's get that put in. Next, it comes with a crossover tube that goes from across the front from here to here, just like that. Let's get it started. I also turned it over and put all the vacuum ports in. We'll probably end up blocking this one off for now. But that'll be our brake booster. This will eventually go to our cruise control, which we're probably not going to hook up. We're not going to have time. And this will be, which is a very small one, I think will be fine for um, the HVAC system. So that should be fine for all that. So this part, I think, is basically assembled. Um, there's some other stuff I think we need to do right quick. Maybe a piece of wiring or two, and then we'll see if we can't get this bolted in. So, it actually comes with a knock sensor harness. I didn't know if it did or not. I put this one back on. I'm just going to go ahead and take it back out. Go, biggie. Lay it in here. Just like that. I'm going to set the intake back on the engine. Go. We're going to start testing all the uh, um, electrical stuff and see if we're going to mount everything and that sort of stuff. So it has some sub harnesses for the injectors. So I have this one in my hand. So we're just going to go ahead and pop it in.
So as of right now, I'm going to try to put the computer and the fuse box and stuff over here on the driver's side. That might change. That's why I'm laying all this out. I just need to see how it lays in here and what I can make it do. stuff done uh, or at least mocked up I'm gonna show it to you um, just know that some of this isn't gonna make it before we do power tour but we'll be back and when we get back uh, we'll, we'll probably end up adding some of this but I'll show you you'll, you'll see it right away yeah what do you think so I'm going to add the strut tower brace later, but I wanted to know kind of how the wires would lay out around it and how much room I had to have, blah, blah, blah. And I, I was dying to know if it was going to clear the throttle bracket, but there's plenty of room. So yeah, I picked that uh, specific strut tower brace because I knew that it would um, clear, or I was pretty sure it would clear the intake because it clears the tune port intake. Um, anyways, I've got the wires kind of laid in there. I know that looks like a rat's nest over there. Um, that'll clean up pretty good. I gotta figure out a place to mount the uh, fuse panel, which I'm pretty sure is gonna be pretty close to where it's sitting over there. And then I gotta figure out something to do with the um, ECM. And I kind of want to make a bracket, maybe mount it right here. Um, my only question is it might be too close to that header, so it may get moved over here. I don't know. I haven't decided that yet, but I do think I'm to the point that I'm going to pull it all back apart, actually start physically hooking the wires up and see if we can bolt the intake down and go from there. So, um, I'm just going to kind of do that because there's really going to be nothing to see. It's just me throwing wires around and bolting intake down there's nothing to it so i am going to get dipped back to that and we'll go from there all right so i've been making fuel lines uh this is actually the last one i've got a couple ends put on it i thought i'd show y'all how to put together an an fitting on an line style line um i had no idea what i was doing before i started this i'd never done one so I wanted to do a few kind of get you know get what I was doing before I showed you so just unscrew the collar so it's got a collar um, I used electrical tape to seal this off so when you cut it it doesn't fray otherwise if it frays you'll never get it through the collar it is a chore to get it in that collar but you just get it started and honestly, that's got too much tape on it. I'm gonna have to take a round off. If it has too much, it just will not go and you'll work and work and work for nothing. All right. See, that doesn't look like a lot, but it's enough to really slow you down. So when I start, I just put it on Give it a good twist until it started, which is pretty simple. Then um, I, I was just pushing them on like that by hand, but my hands are so, super sore now from that, so I started using the anvil part of the vise um, and. Putting it on there and just pressing down and kind of twisting it back or back and forth like this. And then just check it as you go. I just look down in there to see how far it is up, just to make sure it's it is coming in and it is. And you don't want to, well maybe you do, but I've not been quite coming up all the way to the threads. Uh, that leaving just a small gap there uh, in my thought is that's gonna that rubber is gonna expand when you tighten this up and it needs some place to go so not a lot just a little uh, 
I'm, you probably won't be able to tell, but it's just, just below the threads. I bought the vice jaws last year. I didn't even own a vice yet, <laughs> but they make it really, really simple to work with. So you just put that on and take the ferrule in from the other side, put it in and just get it started. Screw it down. Just like that. And there you have it. 1A in line. Now let's put a fitting on the other side and this line's done. Of course all this is just mocked up and it's in here but it, but it still needs to be tightened down and stuff so we've got our feet in and it goes around to this fuel rail then up that fuel rail it's got a crossover down here then into this fuel rail back then out you can see it comes up over there fuel pressure regulator the return over to here this isn't exactly how i wanted to run it but this is the parts i have um we are missing something that I'm hoping I can get uh, at a speed shop locally, but I'd already ordered one, but it won't be here till Wednesday. There's a plug that needs to go in there with an O-ring. So hopefully that doesn't hold us up too bad, but I feel good about how the fuel systems ran, except for this garbage right here. And later on, we'll fix that. I, you know, that'll get us the power tour. I'm going to order, get another a 90 right there just to get this off the and honestly if i had to i could zip tie it down or anything but yeah it really needs needs a 90 a couple of 90s you know a little, little bit of a little bit more tweaking but it'll do it ain't gonna it ain't gonna hold us up so i think uh also i put in the uh, washer motor or wiper motor and washer and it clears but just barely, but it's good enough for this guy. So I ain't, uh, that ain't going to hold us up either. Uh, oh, this is going to be an issue, but not right now. There's almost no room between, there's my finger for reference. I had to come out of there with a sharp 90 or something. I don't know what room about that. So I don't know. I'm, uh, I think I may try to, Take the intake back off, run some of the wiring more permanently, bolt the intake down. And uh, yeah, I've got the heater box outside uh, I was working on it. I'm going to go back out. I'm going to try to finish it up and let it dry so we get the heater or the air conditioning box back in. Whew, we're making progress for sure. It's starting to look starting to look like a car again. Well, it's the next day. Um, it's kind of late yesterday when I was trying to put the intake on. I realized that uh, we hadn't looked at any of the vacuum ports and they're all underneath the intake. So you have to do that before you can bolt it down. Um, the vacuum ports are a little long and we didn't have any actual vacuum line. So I had to go get stuff by the time I got home. It was really late. So uh, yeah, here we are next day. I'm going to... Uh, get all the vacuum line and kind of figure out what I'm going to do and I'll show you what I'm going to do and we'll go from there. All right, so here's the bungs they give you. Um, and they're just so close to the uh, valley cover that I'm going to have to cut them back just a little bit. Just try to create a little more room under there so the hoses can make it, make the bend they need to make. Cut it halfway, right there. Go. Cool. Move a piece of sandpaper and just knock the edges off of that. All right, we got our good and cleaned up. 
I'm going to add put some Teflon tape on that. We'll get that one back in. See if we can get this in here now. It'd be good if I'd have ran these uh, hoses on the right side. Shoot. And flip those, pull it back out, flip them over. Finally got that bolted down. Um, I got all the wires kind of hooked up and ran where they got to be. Fuel lines all tight except these two. I'm going to tighten them here in just a minute. Um, I think the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten those up and then I'm going to put the air box in so I can run the wires over it and see if we can't get the rest of this kind of tidied up. And then we'll figure out where we're at and what we're going to do next. Well. I've done a lot since you last saw it. Um, I put the air box in, got all that together. I kind of tucked that uh, ECM down in there. It can't come out, so that may be temporarily permanent. I don't know yet. Um, I put the car's original wiring harness back in so we can crank it and all that sort of stuff. I had to do quite a bit of modification to that. I put a throttle cable in. Eh, I don't know if I like it or not yet. Well, it'll get us there um, I got the battery cables loosely in. I got the ground cable bolted to the block um, I put a ground strap on it but I haven't hooked it up yet but with all that being said it is late on Monday tomorrow morning I have to call and tell them how long a drive shaft I need or we ain't gonna make it so I'm gonna jack this thing up um, and go ahead Put the torque arm on it figure all that out and just loose figure out where the transmission is going to sit jack it up whatever i got to do and then take that measurement um and so we get that drive shaft cut so i don't know we might make it it's, it's still monday so i have four more days of work yeah, it's like putting 10 pounds of crap in a five pound bucket though anyways I'm going to get back after it and get this thing jacked up and see about that torque arm. Well, we got a problem. It's a big one. It's going to be a big setback. Um, I ordered the wrong yoke. I ordered a 1350 style yoke. should have ordered a 1310. The instructions for the uh, GK Tech shifter says that you have to use a 1310. It will not clear a 1350. Um... And they're right. <laughs> How about that? I don't have enough time to get a 1310. Um, so, yeah. Transmission is going to have to come out of this car. we got to hope it all. Um, I'm going to call this a video right here. Uh, still got four days to finish this car before I leave for Power Tour. We'll see. We'll see. Thanks for watching. Uh, wait for the next video. It'll uh, it'll it'll run or it won't. So we'll see you on the next one.